In her new book is The Edge of Chaos, Why Democracy is Failing to Deliver Economic Growth and How to Fix It. But far more important is her story as a chemist out of Zambia to American University and then to Oxford in a storied career in international relations. Denby, so we are thrilled to have you with us uh, today. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. When Thank I look you. at Singapore, when I look at the collapse of G7, I bring it right over to the fragilities of G20. How fragile after this weekend is G20 in our emerging market institutions? Well, first of all, I wouldn't say collapse of the G7. I think most of these institutions um, do require some kind of uh, a reboot and, and some form of innovation. And the G20 is clearly vulnerable um, in that respect. Um, I don't think that means that these institutions uh, cannot survive what I consider to be a, a sort of a shock to the system um, in the way of President Trump. I mean, I think his approach to really um, encouraging a new engagement uh, is important, but um, more, more generally, the issues around how these institutions will survive and what they will stand for going forward, I think, is central and critical and must be debated. And I think the very fact that uh, Chancellor Merkel is saying that there are some kernels of truth in what uh, President Trump is saying regarding right. the uh, uh, the need for Russia, to, uh, the debate from Russia, I think tells us that we do need to revisit some of these much more challenging questions. Within these uh, kernels of truth, and certainly that was a theme that we heard this weekend, is the idea of where these institutions will be with China is really the heart right. of the matter is we have not pulled China into our global institutions. Yes, I think that's um, the, the central question. But even more fundamentally, Tom, is the issue of these these very fundamental ideological differences between the West, which we know um, has really carved a view around the individual. Um, the, the idea of market capitalism and freedom and democracy are really about uh, utility of the individual, whereas China's approach is very much about the utility and maximization of society, um, very often at the, at the uh, cost or at the uh, uh, concerns of, uh, of the individual and how businesses react, how we will be able to compete in a world which is becoming much more, um, I would say, leaning towards much more of the Chinese view, I think, is the question at hand. Of course, issues around globalization, um, concerns around democracy are really, to me, um, uh, pers or pushing towards this, uh, this greater right. debate that needs to happen. But, Dambiza, overall, is the Trump administration and is Brexit the solution or is it the problem? Well, I think it's an artifact of broader economic challenges. I'm in my, my book, um, Edge of Chaos, I'm talking about these fundamental structural problems that are bubbling under the economy. So, yes, we can say the stock markets are performing, and uh, certainly we're seeing growth, and we are seeing improvements in unemployment numbers, but there are a whole host of very fundamental structural problems that um, threaten to upend the global economy. Things like the amount of debt, the fact that productivity remains low, concerns about income inequality and demographic shifts, and of course technology and the risk of a jobless underclass. But so you have outlier uh, politicians that are actually trying to fix it in their own way. Now, you can argue you agree with it or not, but is, is Trump kind of a phenomenon because of what we've seen in our underlying economies, which is people not feeling part of the solution? Well, I, I would say so. I think that it's a very natural artifact of, of widening income inequality, the collapse of social mobility, but a whole host of, of other concerns around um, uh, really uh, the, the, the degradation of uh, uh, living standards uh, around the world. Yes, we have seen significant improvement and the emerging markets converging, but at the same time, it's fair to say that we have seen a collapse in real wages and, and people in, in many parts of middle America have suffered while globalization has occurred. So that, to me, was really the impetus for Trump and or Brexit. I mean, we, could, we can piece out whether this is about immigration specifically, but ultimately it falls down to, to economics, I would argue, and, uh, and the question around living standards. And Demisa, you talk about a system needing an overhaul. When you take a look at Asia versus Europe versus the U.S., which region needs it more? Well, I, you look, I think that uh, my fundamental belief in all these systems is, first of all, I'm not an ideologue. I think all these systems have their benefits and they have their costs and challenges. Um, I think ultimately we need to constantly revisit and innovate on all of them. And I think that what Asia has clearly done in the past 30 to 40 years is show that it can innovate. It was very um, closed societies, um, very status. And we've seen over the last um, three decades that they've moved much more into engaging with the global economy 
and you know we are seeing um, you know uh, percolating and at very low levels uh, the rise of democracy so I'm um, clearly we've seen significant improvements there what what I would argue for Western society is that unfortunately we've been forced into the debate around innovation because of the rise of populism but also because of the financial crisis which has essentially these two aspects have shown that essentially market capitalism and uh, the, quest the questions around free markets and free peoples right. um, were up for, for innovation.